Welcome back to Elk Mountain, everyone. Yes, you got the revelation at the end of the last episode that Sandy is back. Completely out of the blue, she just shows back up. I haven't had a chance to have an in-depth chat with her yet. Uh, she was super tired, she'd been travelling for a long time, so we left her We left her to it last night, and uh, we said we'd pick up with her at some point today. Now, we've got to head back to Jeb's old place here, where we left our uh, equipment, because, as we were going to do in the last episode, we are going to run this down to the dealership, and we're going to do some upgrades. There's a couple of things we're going to do today. We're going to purchase a field, the field um, directly opposite our new farm. The round field has got a very nice crop of soybeans in it so rather than uh, buying a field that needs all the work doing to it we're going to reap the benefits of having some crops already planted so that is a real positive but for now we need to i think upgrade some of our equipment to make it a little bit more fit for purpose on the new farm bigger fields and everything so all of this gear um, we may have a buyer for, a collector in fact, an old collector of vintage machinery who seems very interested in our stuff. So, um, let's head down to the dealership and see what sort of money we're going to make. I'm not holding out much hope that it's going to be a fortune, but it all helps. Now, as you all also know, the strange affair with Buck about hiding that car the other day is still playing on my mind. I'm I'm just confused as to what's going on. Again, it doesn't feel like things are completely above board. Now, in the very short conversation I did have with Sandy last night, she kind of suggested to me that there is more to it uh, with Buck. Although Jeb is off the scene now, Buck is still very much... A character of interest, shall we say. Um, so, hopefully we'll find out a little bit more from her later on. But that car up in the woods, there's more to that than meets the eye, and I need to find out what it is. Alright, let's get the old tractor off here. Beautifully done. We should just park this in front of the other bits of equipment. And then we should be able to get rid of... Pretty much all of it, straight away. Uh, the sea drill, just $190 for that. The cultivator, the Alice Jama cultivator. $1,400 for that one. Our old John Deere here. Now, it's only $11 to repair, so we'll do that. And it's going to give us $8,286, so that's not bad. We have got quite a lot of money in now from the oil. And the spreader again, just pennies really. Nothing super, super um, brilliant that will give us huge amounts of money. But like I said, the oil is starting to come in now. We're expecting a little bit of money from the gold mine in the next uh, day or so as well. So that's good. We'll keep our lime here. That will come in handy another time. But let's head in now and have a chat to the dealer. Because he's been looking around for us for quite a while now. He may have found us some deals. Well, that was a very interesting conversation with the dealer. He's got some nice stuff lined up for us. At the moment, we don't need anything desperately. So we're not going to pick up any equipment yet, but we are going to do something else. And I'm just going to head along here and show you what it is. Because for a while now, I've been thinking about what we do with this oil. We're uh, getting this nice oil out of the ground up at the lake in an area that I, uh, I own. But we're not doing much with it other than selling it. Now, I can take it to the refinery and get it separated into propane and uh, diesel. Which will give us a little bit more money. Plus, this Jeb died. There is nobody selling fuel in town. So, it's going to help the local economy and maybe get me back in some people's good books. So, I have been speaking to the guys. But okay, used who have been a great support for me since I got here. And they've got a plot of land next to their garage. And they were like, yeah, if you want it, you can have it. Obviously for a fee. So we're going to pick this up. We are going to spend some money. We are going to pick up this plot of land. Very reasonably priced as well. Just here, 
Outside of town, just $3,942. So we're just going to hit the buy button on that. Obviously, we're going to have to go and sort the paperwork at City Hall. But for now, we've just bought another piece of land. And while we're here, this is the field that we were talking about as well. That is 66,380. Let me just jump back. As you can see, there's 122,000 in the bank now. So we can afford to buy that field as well and still give us a little bit of float in the bank. I also think there's more oil to sell ready back at the lake. So uh, we'll go and sort that out at some point as well. But for now, we are going to buy this piece of land. So there we go. Field three is now part of our little growing empire. So we've got... The land here at Bighorn Lake, we don't own the whole lake, but we've got Bighorn Lake here where our oil pump is. We've got Field 3, we bought Farm 2 as well. And we own this piece of land just down here as well. So things are looking good. Now I've already spoken to the builders that they're going to come and start work here. Hopefully in the next couple of days, everything's lined up so we will get that sorted. But for now... Let's head back to Jeb's place. Let's dump this truck and we will go and catch up with Sandy. Hope she's had a good night's sleep and she's ready for a chat because I need info. So Sandy's grabbed a room in the motel where Daryl drinks, actually. Um, we haven't seen Daryl for a, a little while. Maybe we'll bump into him now, but uh, she's staying there for a few days. Just while she gets things organised. I don't know how long she's going to stay, to be honest. We just need to find out what's going on. So, we will pull up here. And we'll catch up with her. Hey Sandy, how did you sleep? Hey FSG. Yes, good, thank you. It's um nice to be back. Although I'm not sure I might be saying that too long. Yes, the amount of people that are worried about you. Um, you disappeared when Jeb died. Nobody knew where you'd gone. Everybody was very concerned for a while. People thought you were the body up on the hill. Got to have to tell me what's going on. All in good time, FSG. But I've got to be sure about a few things first. I don't want to tell you stuff that might tur not turn out to be right. So can you just bear with me just for a few days? Uh, I've got a lot of things I need to check out. And that's really the reason I'm here. I'm not going to stay around for long. It's not safe for me still. So please bear with me. Okay, that sounds pretty serious. Um, is there nothing you can tell me? Maybe I could protect you. Like I said, FSG, when the time is right, you'll be the first person I come to. Well, I didn't get much out of her, did I? That's frustrating. And that car is still bothering me up on the ridge. Maybe I should have mentioned that to her as well. I wonder what's in it. Why did I not check that before I left it? I'm going to go back and speak to her. Hey Sandy. Sorry, it's me again. I knew there was something I had to tell you. Sure, FSG, what's up? How much do you know about Buck, Jeb's brother? You know I'm in business partnership with him now. And everything's been running fine for months. We've had no issues at all. No questionable dodgy goings on. It's all been very smooth and amicable. And the other day, he came to me and asked me to get rid of a car. He said he was doing it as a favour for a friend. It was an insurance job. Something didn't quite sit with me. He asked me to lose it in the woods. Just all feels very strange. And did you do it? If it felt weird, did you do it? You know me, Sandy. Kind of got a track record of doing stupid things so yes I did okay that maybe changes things can you take me to it I think we need to check it out yeah sure I can actually do you know what Sandy on the way up there I might just phone Buck and see if he knows anything about it he's been avoiding me definitely been avoiding me okay yeah well if we can shed some light on it definitely it will be helpful I have got a bit of a theory going on here. Okay, that sounds interesting. Well, that's what he's got to say for himself, shall we? Hello? 
Hello, Buck speaking. Who's this? Hey, Buck. It's FSG. You seem uh, agitated. Is everything okay? Absolutely fine. How can I help you, FSG? See this car? I just want to. Sorry to go on about it, but what? Uh, what was the deal again? Why did you have to get rid of it? Like I said, it was an insurance job, and uh, needed to lose the car for a claim. He's a bit short of money at the moment. Okay. Um, is there anything in it? I didn't look in it, but uh, um, anything that I need to know about it that you maybe haven't told me? Listen, FSG, there isn't always a bigger story, right? You are like this with my brother. Don't start this with me, okay? Bottom line, my friend needed to get rid of that car. I helped him out. End of story. Just move on from it, man, will you? Okay, look, listen. Didn't want any trouble. That's all I want to check. That's fine by me. Okay. Meet you soon. Well. Here we are, Sandy. I think I tucked it behind these bushes somewhere down here. Let me see if it's still here. Yes, there it is. It is still here. That is one beaten up old car. I mean, really? An insurance job? Be lucky if you get 50 bucks for that. Let's have a look inside. Okay. I mean, there is nothing inside the cabin. Watch your footing there. The boot is locked. Like, properly locked. Let me see, I might have a crowbar or something in the car. Might be able to help us with that. Uh, Sandy? I think you better come and look at this. What is it, FSG? What have you found? Um, there's a lot of money here. I'm thinking... Thousands of dollars. There is a forgery machine or some device for creating copies of paperwork. And then in this box here, there is tons and tons of land deeds for lots of places around the town. What, I mean, what would what would they all be doing up here? The plot thickens. The plot thickens indeed, FSG. And it does not surprise me one little bit. Right, close this up. Let's head back to town. I think we should pay Enid a visit in the town hall. Let's make a note of some of these uh, deeds here. Then we'll head over and see her. So FSG, you should know, through a lot of my research, the Hughes brothers and their family, before them even, their dad and their grandfather, always up to trouble in this town they have been trying to own this town for years and years and years and for whatever reason they always seem to manage to mess it up but it's making them more determined than ever um, I have lots and lots of evidence if you remember back to before Jeb died the amount of times they tried to stop me from printing stuff in the paper that would uh, put them into a bad light well that just continues. I continue to uncover stuff. Right, we're here. Let's go and see what Enid's got to say about that paperwork. Hello, Enid. I'm hoping you can maybe help us. Of course, FSG. Anything for Ambrose's nephew. Hello, Sandy. It's nice to see you again. Thank you, Enid. You're a superstar. Now, listen. Would you give us the paperwork? Just, We're not going to take it away. We would just like to see it. Uh, for the following four places I just have something I'd like to check out of course FSG give me two minutes and I'll be back no, I'm sorry FSG I'm struggling to find them I've, I've looked everywhere and they don't appear to be here um, now I've had a look at the records and I've gone and spoken to some of the other people who work here and they say a lot of them were checked out last week um, so I don't know where they are at the moment and there was no name against them when they were checked out so 
I can't even tell you who's got them. Hopefully they'll be returned soon, though. Okay. Thanks, Enid. Um, that's very interesting indeed. We'll see you soon. Sandy, you do realise that that paperwork was what was in the boot of the car. I do, FSG. I've got a note of the names that were on that paperwork, too. I've got a funny feeling that wasn't the original paperwork and that wasn't the original owner's signatures on them. But I don't know where we go from here. Well, we dropped Sandy off again. We've got some work to do. But, um, yeah. Interesting stuff. Glad we didn't take the paperwork away. I did grab a couple of photos of it though, so we have got some evidence, but um, it just seems very interesting that either that is the original paperwork up there in that car, or it's a copy of the forgery equipment and all that money suggests that there is something rather questionable going on. Don't even know if the money was real or forged as well, so we'll just have to make our own assumptions for now. But what we're going to do now, we are going to head up here. We are going to check on the oil pump. And I think this time we will take it down to the refinery. And rather than selling off as crude oil, we will split it into two different things. That's diesel and propane. So let's see how much is ready here. I'm kind of hoping there's a full truckload. There we go, a full load added again. Another 8,000 litres, that is looking good. We're getting to a point now where we, if we make a little bit more money, could start to think about employing somebody. Now I know things are quiet for Clint at the moment. Maybe he wouldn't mind a few extra bucks driving the old truck couple of days a week I'm sure he'd quite like to do that so uh, we'll maybe drop in on him on the way back and uh, see if he's up for it FSG it's Buck how are you doing yeah I'm good Buck everything okay I just wanted to check you've not been back up to that car have you you've not been too nosy have you just now it's there just leave it there we don't want the police finding out it's up there and joining it back together my friend's about to close on this insurance deal and uh he'll be happy then so just do me a favor stay away from there no worries buck i'll uh do that i've got enough on my plate anyway i'm very busy so uh yes consider the case closed okay Case is closed. Don't uh, don't go up there. Just yeah, stay out of the way. It's probably the best thing to do. Right, let's go and say hi to Clint. Hey, if it isn't FSG, how are you doing, sir? I've not seen you for a while. How's things? Things are going well, Clint. How are you? All good on the farm? Totally, man. Everything's great. Now, listen. You want to go into a little bit of a business partnership with me? You might like it. Oh, really? You don't think I'm into enough trouble with my other business partner at the moment? Oh, I am a pussycat compared to that guy. So listen. Whoever owns the bar in town is continually hiking the prices and putting the prices up. It's really getting on the locals' nerves. So, I've set myself up. A little brewing operation in the shed over there. But I could do with somebody to help me move it about and just generally distribute it. When you say brewing, Clint, what exactly do you mean? Well, I thought about beer. And then I thought, well, if you can make beer, you can make something stronger. So there's a little bit of moonshine going on at the moment. Clint, if they find you... 
Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. But it's okay. It's all good. The cows are in that shed too, so they're not going to want to go in because of the smell. I've thought all this through. I've got to say, Clint, I like your uh, entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, I can help you out, of course I can. On the proviso, you help me out. How do you fancy running an oil truck a couple of days a week? Sure, man. Whatever you need. To be honest, I'm welcome of all the money at the moment. It's going to keep uh, the Hughes family off my back. Oh? What do you mean? So they've been pressuring me for a while to sell the land. And I'm not interested. I love it here. But, um... They start to make me offers. But I'm really struggling to turn down. Well... Just hold your horses, Clint. Don't do anything yet. Um, there's a few things going on which might reveal a few other things, so just sit tight at the moment. No worries. Thanks, FSG. I appreciate you looking out for me. Okay, things are getting weirder and weirder. Why do the Hughes family want to buy Clint's old farm? I mean, he doesn't even own any of the land. It literally is this plot here. Very strange. Anyway, let's get over to the refinery. Well, here we are. I would usually drop into this first place, but what we'll do, we will head over here and unload things just here. So there we go. Let's activate this for 500 litres of crude oil. We get 400 litres of diesel. 100 litres of propane. So we'll let that run for a bit. And uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll see what that earns us. I think we'll need to get our gas station up and running first before we can sell the diesel. But I do know I can sell the propane at the trailer park just out of town. So that's good to know. Right. Let's get this parked up back at the farm. Uh, Buck's phone calls are playing on my mind, especially that second one. Why was he so keen for us to stay out of the way of that car up on the hill? Just making me want to go and check it out more. So, let's, uh, let's park this up. And as we're close, it's just up there. We could go and have a look, couldn't we? Alright, that was a bonus that Clint will help us out with the driving for a bit. That eases the pressure. It means we can shift some stuff around a little bit quicker. So hopefully, the next time we see him, he'll be driving around in our truck. Right, let's head up into the hill, shall we? Right. I am determined to find out what's going on up here. It is bugging me. Oh... Okay, I'm just going to keep driving like I'm supposed to be here and I'm minding my own business. There's a couple of guys standing at the back of that van there. I'm just going to keep going and hope. Don't notice me, follow me, or do anything worse. Actually, there's a ridge up here I could probably park on out of the way. See, I can see what's going on. I'm glad I bought my binoculars. Let's see if we can get the reg. Hmm, interesting. No reg number. They don't want to be identified. Well, I think I might just leave them to it. But the plot thickens. The plot thickens. 